morning. Debunk Pet of Love for me is an amazing story of God in the lives of our people here in the region, especially for the sake as well as for the earlier day. It is amazing because it speaks of a cooperation and a communion of each and every one. From the sisters who are organizing, to the sponsors, to the many people and part and parcel of the journey, to the priests who are celebrating, to the choir offering themselves, the banquet of love is God's presence feeding us constantly with the word, with the good news, evangelizing us to go further and to go beyond, not only in this life, but even to a life beyond. The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, speaks about this year as he creates the year of consecrated life. This ends the second major section of the letter on consecrated life by Pope Francis. So let us pause then for a moment and recall what he has taught so far. Remember, in section one, he spoke of the aims of the letter, which he mentioned viewing the past of religious institutes with gratitude, living the present with passion, and then embracing the future with hope. That was section one. Then we went on to section two, where he enunciated his expectations for this year of consecrated life. This section, he, he uses certain phrases, I would call them catchphrases, which he introduced. Such phrases as, where there are religious, there is joy and wake up the world, and religious as experts in communion. Those are the first two sections. Now we begin section three, and this is the final part of the letter. He entitles this Horizons for the Year of Consecrated Life. He intends it to be a visionary statement as the word horizon implies. For him, consecrated life stands as the light on the hill, shining out in all directions, illuminating the dark all around. It carries a message forward. It brings the light into the unknown region still shrouded in darkness, sending forth the gospel message of joy, a very dear theme for Pope Francis, joy. This horizon the Holy Father speaks of is a powerful image. The church looks out into space with the whole of creation in its view. It is on the mountain. It is the rock of Peter and it sees all of the Father's creation spread before it in all directions, both spatially and temporally. There are the laity, those of all times and cultures that ever have been and will be. There are also other churches of the Christian tradition first, and then other great religions of the world, so diverse and so widespread, both in time and in space. All of these lie within this vision, this horizon, the purview of the church because she is the bride of Christ who said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all things to myself. All these elements the Holy Father wants now to address as he ends his letter to consecrated persons on the consecrated life. So let me end there. I'll pick up this theme again next time. Good morning. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago, Stu Anansi Santiago, APM Ad and Promo Management, Alex P. Montanez and Family, Ernie and Mercy Evangelista, St. John Paul II College of Davao, Pat and Gigi Coronel and Children, Chino Chan Casey Neng and Alot, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Quilan's Food House, Dimdi Center and Dimdi Builders, Teresita Villa Abrilie, T. Lino Trucking Services, I. Crafter Optical Incorporated, Dabao Durian Laundry Services Company, Chardon, Esper Laundry Services, Vita Rivera's Bookkeeping Services, Comfer Realty Corporation, Ampi Casas and Family, Protasio Tacandong, Renato and Porita Lorenzo, Attorney and Mrs. Ellie R. Britannia and Family, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Mrs. Fe Lamido and Family, 
Consolidated Plywood Industry Incorporated, Davao Bonifacio Motors, Anonymous, Friends of Paul Lines, Melvin Aviles, Davao LB Junk Store, and Rudy and Evangeline Mepico. Offering of the Holy Mass. Accept most holy trinity. This sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the divine word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offers and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring groups, Dr. and Mrs. Sherwin Abinales and family, Mr. and Mrs. Felix Cahucom, Mr. and Mrs. Maria Teresa Herona, Mr. and Mrs. Jack Sinate, Mr. and Mrs. Efrain Algones, Mr. and Mrs. Jose Elgin Concha, Mr. and Mrs. Willard Estrada, Mr. and Mrs. Elgilbert Eugenio, Mr. and Mrs. Rogelio Franco Jr., Mr. and Mrs. Rodolfo Hakutin, Mr. and Mrs. Bibiano Liparto, Mr. and Mrs. Imurin Marin, Mr. and Mrs. Fedil Mupas, Mr. and Mrs. Fernando Mondejar, Mr. and Mrs. Jomar Palma, Mr. and Mrs. Tommy Parantar, Mrs. Emilu Pedrosa, Mr. and Mrs. Mario Quezaba, Mr. and Mrs. Henry Racal, Mr. and Mrs. Eric Sibayan, Mr. and Mrs. Zosimo Son Jr., Mrs. Zeni Serrano, Mrs. Jill Tan, Mr. and Mrs. Pedrito Ibanez, Mr. and Mrs. Candel, Mr. and Mrs. Harrison Culiados, Ms. Nenya Davirao, Mr. and Mrs. Reggie Limsan, Mr. and Mrs. Cristina Asuncion, Mr. Vincent Otaide, Mr. Jared Fajardo, Red Carpet, Parish of Christ the Eucharistic King of Tagum City, Barangay Agdao Proper Constituents of Davao City, headed by Barangay Captain Aysan John Tamayo. Thanksgiving intentions and blessings of Lina Ledesma and family, Reynaldo Tat Coronel and Gigi, Junicio Candel and family, Helen Caber and family, Jomar Palma and family, and Honorable Harrison Coliados. Birthday intentions of Kenneth Coronel, recovery and healing of Rodolfo, Mila Villa Abrilie, Jermin Chu, Flora Villa Luz, Tat Coronel, and Father Bill Mali S.J. For the eternal repose of Luciana, all benefactors of Pauline's RTV programs, Florderica, Jose Isidorico, Adela Jeronimo, Felicidad, Carlos Casiana, Calixtra, Isidro, Pablo Concepcion, Maria, and the seventh death anniversary of Ruben Apostol Sr. Prayers for the sick. Father, your Son accepted our sufferings to teach us the virtue of patience in human illness. Hear the prayers we offer for our sick brothers and sisters. May all who suffer pain, illness, or disease realize that they are chosen to be saints and know that they are joined to Christ in His sufferings for the salvation of the world. He lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. Easter is a good season for us to realize that the followers of Jesus are called to be a community. The gospel is eminently communitarian. While his peace to the guilt-stricken apostles, 
he offered his own wounded hands to quell St. Thomas's doubts. Yes, we find mercy in our God, restoring us from our shame, answering us in our doubts, searching us out in our absence from His presence. In Jesus' cross, we are given the ultimate symbol of the divine mercy. In His resurrection, we are assured of this everlasting gift that conquers all sin and death. Mercy is a demanding task that no human can fully live up to. But in the countless times, we fail and feel hopeless. We can always go back to this Sunday's message. In God, there is no vengeance, only mercy. To officiate the Holy Mass is Father Ronald Lunas, parish priest of Santa Cruz, Davao del Sur. The choir during the Holy Mass is the Children's Youth Choir, parish of Christ the Eucharistic King, Tagum City. Come, let us sing joyfully and celebrate the banquet of love. Please rise. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. In the name of the apostolates, Peter declares to the crowd that the ministry and the death of Jesus were according to God's plan of salvation. Because Jesus was obedient to the Father, God raised him up and made him to the source of our salvation. The first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did, but God has thus brought to fulfillment what we had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets and his Christ would suffer. Repent. Therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The Word of the Lord. John steers confidence in the hearts of sinners. God the Father is ready to forgive us, because in the risen Christ, 
we have a powerful intercessor before God's throne. The second reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. scriptures to us make our hearts burn while you speak to us Proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory Glory to Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. 
You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. We are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. We are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. This line, actually coming from a song, beautifully and aptly describes our relationship with the risen Lord. This describes who we are as followers of Jesus, the risen one, who we are as baptized Christians. The past season of Lent was not just a 40 days, more or less, of preparation for the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. We were in these days of grace, prepared to celebrate our resurrection as well. I repeat, the season of Lent was not just a preparation for 40 days more or less for that very important event in the life of Jesus, His resurrection, but also for us to prepare ourselves to celebrate that very important event in our life as Christians, our resurrection. You might ask me, but are we already resurrected? We are not yet dead. No, I talk about a resurrection. How did it happen? How is that possible? Brothers and sisters, remember, we have been resurrected when we were baptized. So that as we celebrated the night when the Lord was resurrected, remember the Easter Vigil, and remember Easter Sunday, we were asked to renew our baptismal commitment, our baptismal promises, because connected to the resurrection of Jesus is our resurrection in the sacrament of baptism. What does it mean to be resurrected in baptism? St. Luke in our gospel describes to us Jesus the resurrected one as the same person yet different. The same person, yet different. He is the same person because the disciples can still touch him. He is the same person because, as they used to do, the disciples can still dine with him. But the resurrected one, Jesus, is totally a different one not exactly the same person at the same time. That's why we hear also the same evangelist telling us that the apostles had difficulty in recognizing him. The evangelist talks about their doubts, which should not be understood as the lack of faith, but the feeling that they are not so sure if this person before them is Jesus, their master, or someone else. In fact, we were told they were terrified, overtaken by fear and wonder. Take note that this experience of fear and wonder is the usual reaction of someone before the presence of God, as far as the Bible is concerned. So the disciples were not only before someone who is human. Jesus 
in His glorified state all the more expressed the reality of His divinity. Jesus in His glorified state at the resurrection is recognized not only as man, but also as God. We are an Easter people. It means we experience the same as that of Christ. The same person, yet different. We are the same flesh and bones, but we receive a new life when we were baptized. I am reminded of the story about two ministers who were arguing about the right way of baptizing. One minister asked the other, is it enough to baptize someone with water up till the knees? And the other minister responded, no, that's not enough. It's not baptism. Well, what about having water up till the waist? Even then, said the other minister, how about having water up to the neck? Is that already baptism? No, it's not yet baptism. How about water up to the forehead? And the other minister responded the same thing. No, it's not baptism. What about the water reaching the head? That's it. That's baptism. The water on the head. And the other minister who kept asking said, that's the problem with you because for your baptism is just water reaching the head. There is more about baptism. It's not just about pouring of water, neither just about immersing somebody into the waters. Baptism is conversion of life, a transformation of the person life in God. Yes, it's the same person before you, but different. Because this person is a son or a daughter of God. The love of God always is the victor, and it succeeds in drawing good even from the worst actions of the human person. He can even make the fullest behavior of the people fulfill God's plan. And remember the crucifixion, which ended in the resurrection. Brothers and sisters, remember, Jesus can make us stand again after a fall. Thus, Peter's invitation for everybody, not only for the people during his time, but for all of us, repent and return to God. There is this cry in our responsorial psalm of wanting to see the glory of God, of wanting to see the face of God. This is the glorious face of God, the face of the resurrected Jesus. He has shown himself to his disciples. But remember, as I have said early on, we share in the resurrection of the Lord. We too are called to be witnesses, that is, to show to others this face of the resurrected Jesus. There are, some would say, proofs of Jesus' resurrection. First could be the empty tomb, but some could argue there are tombs now which are empty, but this does not mean that the owners are already resurrected. The other proof could be his appearance, Jesus' appearance as the resurrected one to his disciples. But one may also argue, but he himself showed only to his friends, why not to his enemies? But the third is the most important that changed lives of his followers. 
from fear to courage, from discouragement to hope, from sin to grace. If this happens, it's because someone has overcome death, someone has overcome sin, someone has come out victorious, enabling us to be victorious also against sin and death. Brothers and sisters, let us witness to the world the resurrected Christ by our lives, by the self that has changed for the better. Remember, we are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. Please rise, and together we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In the breaking of the bread, Christ Jesus makes himself known to us as our life and resurrection. He sends us to be witnesses to his name. Through him, we present our petition to the Father. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. May your church be a beacon of light helping people who are in darkness to come to know your Son as the way, the truth, and the life. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. May all leaders, by governing with fidelity those entrusted to their care, build nations in peace, brotherhood, and respect for human dignity. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. May all consecrated men and women proclaim your resurrection through their lives, their prayer, and their service to others. We pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Bless our labor that it may sustain our life on earth and enhance our human dignity. Ease our burden, make our faith strong, and inspire us to put our trust in you. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless our relatives and friends. Give them constant encouragement and guide them throughout their lives. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May our sponsors, benefactors, and friends receive all the blessings from the resurrected Christ as they continue to be generous to others. We pray. Lord, hear our prayers. God, our Father, you restored us to yourself through the resurrection of Christ, your Son. Hear the prayers of your people and strengthen us in giving witness to our Easter faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of His name, for the good and good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is a ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with all the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by His divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold Jesus, behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited to the Supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Look with your kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you.